Okay, so uh, let's uh, share the screen. So uh, uh, today we are talking about the O notations. I mean, uh, uh, probably uh, uh, you already know about the O notations, uh, uh, but I need to go through it fast such that you just get the ideas from this one and maybe get more observations from the things that we have it. Uh, uh, next week, uh, we will talk more about this type of induction problems. Uh, but here I wanted to give uh, O notation because I think that's the important one uh, when you talk about the other problems because we may not talk about the exact constants anymore and that would be the O notation. Uh, okay, so uh, here uh, we want to have any algorithm. We need to say that this algorithm is more efficient than the other algorithms. And this is a standard things nowadays. I mean, this O notation, you go geek for geeks, they are talking about the, exactly the efficiency of the algorithm in terms of O notations. So uh, uh, why O notations is important? Because uh, in some sense, we have an algorithm. We want to measure the number of steps of this algorithm. This number of steps might be different. So because we have a different computers, we have the 33, two bits, we had, I don't know, 60 bits, 64 bits. And the operations that they may do it, uh, it might be different. So one operation here might be four operations in a different computer. We have supercomputers, etc. And this type of operations that we have, it, it might be different for different computers, and it might be different speed for different computers. So in some sense, the O notations uh, first introduced for the concept of uh, time. We want to see how much your algorithm takes time essentially on uh, the computer that you are considering. Uh, but uh, the question is that uh, this, yeah, it may take time essentially to do that, but how much time? And this time would be different on different computers. You wanted to have one uh, measure that you can actually is a generalizable mode. So in some sense, actually, uh, I just to say, uh, similar concept, this concept of Docker. That's also important things, please search on it. And that's a, that's a similar thing. This was like, for example, when you work with C and C++, you could get an executable file. A executable file, then it would be different, this executable file on Linux machine or a Windows machine. You need to compile on different things. But still it was, I mean, maybe you could get the uh, things and the libraries, you had it. Now this concept of Docker came, mainly because of Python, because again, the same issues that if you are using different computers, different machines, then you may have a different version of Python. And then if you have your program written here, then you will go to a different computer, your compu then it may not run and give a problem. That was this concept of Dockerization that put every file that you need to compile this one in one Docker, and then put the whole Docker essentially on the cloud or any other computers. And again, VS Code is very important. The same thing for the O notation. For O notation, you want to have something global. So Docker was the same, this idea that, oh, I can do the whole thing in one Docker file. It knows exactly which version of this. If you use Python, it knows which version of this uh, module that I should use it, install all of them and run the program. And you don't need to, for each computer, you will see, oh, what was the, whether this pack, this module is the same module that I should do that or not. When you run it for the first time, you will mention what are the, what are these versions. And when you implement it, actually you will implement it with this version of modules. The same thing here for own notation. You don't want to say, oh, on my computer, it takes this one, but what is your computer? What is your computer? What are the specification of your computer? What is the speed? What is the RAM? What is the hard drive potentially? And these are all important. So you don't want to care about it. That's the thing that we will consider the number of important operations. So we count the number of important operations and that would be the own notations. And these operations can be like multiplications, uh, can be additions or other basic operations. But generally, uh, we are talking about operations that they are independent of input size n. So if you have input size n, if you do some operation in terms of n, then it is not order one. Uh, so in some sense, uh, it turns out this is equivalent of for all notation is that we should essentially ignore the constant factors because this constant factor anyhow that we design for algorithm would be different on a different computer with different speed. This, if we have a 
better computer, then the speed would be essentially faster. And that constant factor can be essentially uh, ignored. And uh, this is some kind of approximation, but actually works quite well. So for the people who worked on math for a while, they were not happy with this own notation. Seems very approximate, but I mean, it's like computer science is a very normal thing that we are using almost for anything. And it's a very formal thing. Uh, so uh, good. And uh, so uh, we will uh, talk about this. We have always the input n, as I mentioned. If you have several parameters, uh, you may consider the sum of those parameters at the input n. And we want to say that, uh, so the, uh, uh, so we talk about the size of the input. Size of the input is always n. This is the size of the input. Uh, so, uh, Uh, here we have the size of input n, and uh, this, we will consider, I mean, we want to say that in terms of n, what is the running time of this algorithm? So when we talk about the running time, again, we will talk running time in terms of uh, o, in terms of uh, o or the number of major steps. Uh, uh, also, uh, so, uh, 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 like a few important things. We will consider the O notations generally for a few things. So sometimes, I mean, we will talk about, uh, we mainly in this course, we will talk about the worst case. Uh, what is the worst case? Uh, uh, so it means that in the worst case, what would be the running time of this algorithm? Uh, we may actually talk about the space that this algorithm takes as well. But generally, the worst case running time is important because in lots of cases, actually, worst case is important. There are something like best case. But best case is not, I mean, that important. Yeah, I mean, maybe you can have some sorting for some particular set of uh, strings. You don't need any operations of any swaps. But that is not that much representative. There is something like called a uh, average case. But I mean, that is also not very well defined in the sense that what's the meaning of average over which distribution, why this distribution is important. These are the things that like, it, it, there are some algorithms on the average cases and there are several papers on that, but still worst case is more popular because you want to say that, okay, uh, it's, it may happen actually that we have the worst case and in that case, uh, what would be the running time? Average case would be important. For example, if we talk about the quick sort and the average case, which is actually worked well, but this concept of average case maybe exists for some problem, but they are not, but they are not for lots of problems. For lots of these problems, we may not have these uh, average case things. Uh, or it, the average case maybe is not very well defined. What is the distribution that we will take average case? Any questions so far? Good. Uh, so here, I mean, as I mentioned, so base case, we don't uh, uh, consider it generally. This is the average case, but we mainly uh, happens essentially that uh, the worst case, and the worst case is important. For example, if it is, you consider the airplane, so you really need to consider be ready for worst case for when you design an, or the algorithm that you have it for uh, airplane. Uh, so uh, th that is uh, very important because for example, if your computer does not work, you can't just reset the <laughs> computer. But for airplane, if there is a, I mean, of course, airplanes, I mean, all of them are exactly the codes, the same type of codes that the people are doing it. and. Uh, uh, if there is a small bug in the uh, code, which indeed was there in the Boeing uh, Max uh, uh, 737 uh, Max. So that uh, you, you may heard about it. Uh, anyone who has not heard about the Boeing uh, 3, like 737 Max, please raise your hand if you have not heard about it. Okay, yeah, just search for that one actually. That, that is important. So this is the, uh, I mean, just there are lots of uh, stories on 
that things, uh, I mean, just, uh, you can just bring it here. Just, yeah, actually I cannot type easily. Just uh, say yes, uh, they have done the other way. But yeah, just search a uh, Boeing uh, 737 MAX. And that was exactly the issue where the software, two airplanes essentially uh, crashed. I don't know, around 500 people was killed. And this uh, airplane were essentially on the ground maybe for two, two and a, uh, maybe around two years such that they can fix the bug. And the issue is that there was, I mean, there was some software uh, that detect something and uh, it became like essentially detect some situation that it needs to go down like this. Uh, this actually happens. Sometimes you need to go down such that you can get the speed and then go up. But this uh, it understood in a wrong way and the pilot didn't have the capability to bring it essentially from this autopilot. This considered a very serious case. And it was an autopilot is needed. So the autopilot was there and they couldn't essentially bring it out of autopilot. Two airplanes essentially crashed like this to the ground. It's like a very, I mean, devastating things. And it, they were all over the world. They were essentially uh, grounded all this Boeing 737. Max. And again, this is a, one example of software that you need to consider the worst case. You cannot just, oh, this is the software that I have written. It, they have designed this kind of, I mean, going down for some very specific things, but it applies to some other cases that should not be that, and they couldn't unlock it as well. And that was the crashes that happened. The worst case are very important for lots of applications. Uh, good. So uh, now uh, the big... Uh, notations as we mentioned. So this is the most important one uh, that the big notations. It means that we are ignoring constant. And generally we are reading this one. When we say that G of N is order F of N, means uh, we will say G, G N is O of F of N. That's the way that we write it. G N is of we can say gn is of o of f of n or gn is o of f of n. That's the thing that we are writing it. And uh, so uh, this is the definition. Uh, so this definition is important. We say that a function g of n is o of, we are writing this one, is writing as o of f of n. Then if there is, uh, there are two constants. These are the constants C and N, such that for all N, all N greater than N, uh, G of N, is less than C times So that's the definition of essentially uh, uh, O-notation. It says that for, there are some constants C and N such that for any, for essentially for large N, and this C and N should be constants. So when N is greater than this N, G of n should be less than or equal to C times F of n. In some sense, this is the constant that we are ignoring. And this is important. Also, we don't want to say that, like for a small n, it doesn't matter. For large n, larger than a constant, this should be like this. And uh, in some sense here, uh, this, as we have it here, sometimes for O notations, O notation in some sense is equivalent of less than or equal. So we want to say that this function f g of n is less than or equal to this function g of n. We use O notations for that purpose. Uh, let me just show you. Is it clear the definition? If there is a question, please ask me. Please unmute and answer. Is everything clear? Yeah, it's good. 
uh, great. Okay, so that's the definition that we talk about it. Uh, and uh, let me actually uh, show some example here, then we can, I think, come back here. Let me just show you this, this diagram. This diagram actually is a very good diagram. They wanted to mention here. So this is, this is essentially a notation that you can see that. So you see this is N, this, this is the diagram that I'm talking about. So there is uh, this function N, this is for O notation. We say that F of N is G of N. You see, uh, this, this is essentially, this function is uh, G of, uh, this function is, uh, um, I think, uh, actually this is, so this is the way, this is the wiggly part is G of N and the other ones is this one. So here, uh, I just wanted to, so this is actually the reverse of this. Here we say F of N is, or the, so this is, uh, the reverse of this one. When we say f of n is g of n, what's the meaning of it? It means that there is some n, so this is f of n, this is g of n. And this g of n, it might be like this. So it is, uh, we want to say f of n is order g of n. And so this is g of n, we may not care about it. This is the constant c that we care about. It. So for some c times g of n, this is the constant thing. f of n, then, n becomes greater than this n. So from here on, you will see that this f of n is always below c times g of n. Good. So from some constant n, then uh, this f of n is always less than c times g of n. That's the meaning of O notation. So in some sense here, you will see that f of n somehow is less than g of n. So here f of n is less than g of n. It's not really less than g of n because g of n actually might be here, but uh, in the O notation, as long as it is less than c times g of n after some constant n, that should be enough for us. So that's something that you can actually see it from the diagram. Uh, let's see an example here. Uh, so, one example is this one. <clears throat> we will say that five n five n to the two plus fifteen is less than is order n to the two. So this may I mean seem uh, not <laughs> correct because okay, how come five? I mentioned that. Uh, O is like less than or equal. So how can we say that five n to the two is less than n to the two? But really, I mean, this is the way that we are talking about the less than or equal. Uh, so uh, here we can just do this one. Uh, this you can check it. That uh, five n to the two plus 15 is always less than 16 times n to the two for n greater than or equal to four. Good. So to show that five n to the two plus 15 is O of n to the two, we only need to write this one. Five n to the two plus 15 is less than or equal to 16 n to the two. Why? Because uh, of course, if n is greater than one, then this 15 would be less than n, so that would less than n to the two. So you can add one more thing. So we have this one. As long as we have it, then we have these two constant that we want. So this 16 would be C, and this would be capital N. So we know that for N greater than four, this is less than 16 N to the two. So, and if, so in that case, the constant 16, we don't care about it. So in this case, this would be order of N to the two. It is also, you can say the same thing. It is also order N to the three. <laughs> because if it is order N to the two, you can say that N to the two is a, order uh, n to the three itself. And we have this transitivity as we discuss uh, here essentially uh, for uh, 
uh, these things. So uh, we have the uh, this uh, yeah. These are the, some important properties that uh, we are uh, <clears throat> doing it. So if we have order uh, this function, uh, say f is order g of n, and uh, g is order. I will say f of n actually. Here g of n. This is also order h of n. So we know that then f of n is order h of n. We call uh, this is the call. This is called transitivity. Trans. So this is this transitivity is very similar to less than or equal, but this is less than equal. This is less than equal. So it means that f of n also should be less than or equal to g of n. So this is the transitivity of O notation. <clears throat> so as I mentioned, so in this example, we had it uh, 5n to the 2 plus 15 is order n to the 2. Actually, let me. And then uh, 5n to the 2 plus 15 is, or uh, then it is, and n to the 2 is order n to the 3, because for uh, n greater than or equal to one, n to the two is less than one times n to the three. So that is trivial. So it means that this function is also n to the three. However, when we design algorithm, we try to generally get the O notation, which is closest. So if it is like, yes, this is order n to the three, but when we talk about it, we have this implicit assumption that we always want to give the tightest bound. So if it is n to the two and n to the three, we often say that it is actually order n to the two, at least for practical application, that is important. Um, let me just read this one. I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Uh, earlier, where did you get the 16 from in the 5n squared plus 15 one? Uh, I mean, this is, I just put something, the max of these two guys. Oh, okay. Yeah, but okay. I mean, you can actually say for something probably smaller than this, but yeah, that's the way that I put it for that. Uh, good. So this in some sense, I mean, you can, probably put tighter bounds than 16. I just put it there. Probably even five should be enough. But I mean, you, we don't care about constant. That's the whole point. So we can always write O of n instead of order five n plus four, as I mentioned. So yeah, and one other thing also, when we have the, in the order notation, we generally write, I mean, we don't, of course we can't say order five n plus four, but because we can ignore the constant and this function, because of this transitivity that I have mentioned. This is itself is order and we try to get the most simplified version. And the same thing also here, when we talk about the log, this is, we don't talk about this, we generally say log two, because uh, this is from the logarithm formula that if it is in some other base two, that will only equivalent of some multiplications of uh, base two. So when we say log, do we don't say what is the base? That means like. Uh, these are the important notations that we are talking about. So order one means constant. When we say order one means essentially constant. We say order n is always, uh, so order n is linear. Order n to the two is quadratic and n to the three is cubic. And this is important actually to uh, notice that we generally care about uh, this. Uh, I mean, these are the type of algorithm that we care. Order one, order n, linear, quadratic, and cubic. After that, it becomes n to the three. Uh, that might be uh, like n to the four. It might be just too much to run for big things, maybe for some dynamic programming, et cetera. But these are the more efficient algorithm that we talk. Maybe even n to the three would be too much for big data. So uh, 
the whole goal is to get this one. Uh, also, uh, this is this other notations that I want to say. Uh, we have this O tilde notation. When we say e, e, O tilde notation, generally means uh, N, uh, so this is equivalent of some order in polylog. What is polylog? Polylog means essentially log of n to some constant, uh, I don't know, c prime. Log n to the two, log n, log n to the five or something. So when we, so in some sense, even uh, we, we try to ignore polylog factors because we say, okay, polylogs, uh, I don't know, for a number of uh, items in the whole universe, maybe it is at most 100 or 200. Any polylog, uh, like maybe is a bit, I mean, polylog log is maybe 200, maybe polylog is a bit more, but even that we may ignore it essentially. You said that it is a, still a constant. So we can even ignore polylog and then uh, sometimes we care about it, but uh, there are some papers that they are using O tilde to mean that even ignore polylog factors. Uh, So uh, I mean to show that actually I mean f of n is g of n is order f of n. It is not always uh, easy to show that there are some problems that might be hard to sh uh, uh, show that. For example, there are some algorithms that we don't know what is the order of them. Like sim uh, uh, simplex method to solve linear programming was one of these examples that the people didn't know for a while whether it takes running time would be polynomial or exponential time. But for this class, this class is introduction to algorithms. That would be a good thing uh, to um, do. And uh, yes, uh, so that is for this class would be easy. And again, one other thing that I want to say that if for the topic of projects, if you think about what are these, the lives again would be very helpful for you because you can see that the, the, the guest actually mentioned very nice problems. So you may think about some of them. I mean, you can try your best to get some results there, but I mean, as long as you are thinking and you mention your writing, that should be good for this class. Yeah, of course, if you can have a published papers out of it, that would be great and can compensate your exams, etc. as well. Uh, great. So, uh, okay. So one important thing here is the polynomial versus exponential. So this is the theorem that we have. Uh, what is the theorem? And here in this talk, when we, whenever we talk about C means constant, n to the c is uh, order a to the n for all constants c and a. So if you have essentially like n to the three is order uh, like 1.0001 to the n. So, or like even I can say n to the 300. n to the 300 is O of 1.0000001 to the n. It should be just greater than one. If it is one, it would be one. A little bit greater, epsilon greater than one to the n, it would be greater than order n to the 300. That's very important. So it means that this means this is a polynomial and this is exponential. Always polynomials are or order of exponential time for any constant. Uh, the, the proof of that is not hard. You can see it in the book or other places. I don't want to go through that. I want to give more things about it. Now, uh, one example, this is one thing that we are doing this. So uh, say in this formula, n to the c is order a to the n, let's replace uh, n. Uh, so this is, we had it n to the c is order a to the n, good. Now, we, this we are doing a lot in this class. Let's replace this n with another one. We say that let's put n equal to log of a base m. So m is another parameter that we can just, n can be anything here as long as it satisfies that. So instead of n, we will put it log m base a. See what will happen in that case. So it would be some formula like this. We have it, uh, then we have it. Uh, uh, this is a formula that actually we will have it here. So we have it uh, uh, log A. So I, 
I just you can just see it here. I don't write it again. So uh, this is the one that we are talking about. So we have. Uh, actually, let me just increase the size. Yes, so I think I just made it the font bigger such that you can just. So we are talking about this font. So, uh, uh, yes. So here, log A of M. So in, in that formula that we have N to the C order N to the A, I will just put A equal to log M of A. What will happen here? It means that log A M of to the C is order A, so N here, so that's the thing, let me just write it down actually. Yeah, here, so we have this uh, log A, the M, for A and A constant to the C, this would be order, I just, instead of uh, A, I will write A, and then I will write this one, log M based A. And the whole thing, uh, yes. So uh, instead of N, I will put this one. Now, this is very important. A to the log based of A, it equals to M. So if we have a to the log m of a, that is equal to a. This is the logarithm definition, essentially. That's easy to see that. So what does it mean? It means that the logarithms, so if at a is a constant. So for any constant a greater than one, log m based on base a, for any base a, to the power c to some constant. This is exactly the one that I was talking about. This is exactly the poly log things that I talk about it. For the polylog means polynomial, log, some logarithm to some constancy is always O of linear. Good. So we have this, uh, as I mentioned, so we have, uh, so we discuss above uh, that, where did we talk about it? Oh yeah, so let me just. So here, so you see, we talk about this one that we had constant, we have linear, we have n to the three, we have n to the three, which is called cubic. And here in between this guy, it is polylog. What is polylog? This is polylog. Log m. I mean, M and N are the same. There is no difference here. Log M in some constant base A to some power C. So this is between, this is larger than constant, but less than linear. And that's the thing that we have. Okay. Uh, so uh, in general, this is the thing that we, so we want to get polynomials over exponentials. That is better. And we want, <laughs> Polylog instead of polynomials or even linear. So polylog is better than polynomial and polynomial is better than exponential. Some important uh, uh, properties of the O notations. Uh, you can see the, the proofs in the book. Again, I'm, when I'm talking about this, uh, I'm talking the UD members book, Introduction uh, to Algorithm, a Creative Approach. Please, I mean, get that book essentially, you can find it. I don't know from, uh, I don't want to mention officially where you, uh, you may not need to buy it if you get it, I don't know, from some websites, etc. that you will find it. But uh, other than you can actually buy even the, the used one and they are cheap as well. Uh, but you can find electronic way, almost any book essentially, you can find it nowadays. Uh, good, uh, so uh, yeah. So, so these are some properties that I want to say that. Uh, so if we have, a, 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 so, so this is an important one, the first one. If f of n is order s of n, 
C times F of N also is order S of N. So if you have F of N is order of some function, if you just multiply some constant C greater than zero, still you have this O notation. So you can, as long as you want, that is somehow trivial by definition. The other one is this one. This, uh, this is, these two are important. If F of N is, is order S of N and G of N is order R of N, you can actually, this is the additive property. If you say F of N plus G of N, then it is order S of N plus R of N. So you can sum the first two guys together and then the second guys together here. So first guy, second guy, still we have it. The other one, if F of N, N is order S of N, and G of N is order R of N, like the previous case. Also, you can multiply it. So if you, you can say F of N times G of N, and this, you can say S of N times R of N. The proof, again, these are just come from the definition. You can see it from the book. If you just write the definition, the whole, whenever we talk about O notations, two important things. We need to find N, capital N, that if N is larger than this capital N, then we have this property. That's the first thing. The second one is the C. You want to say that this is less than C times that. As long as you will find N, uh, this capital N and C, then you are fine. Uh, good. Good, everything gone. Uh, This is a generally O notation is for the upper bound, as I mentioned, for less than or equal. Whenever we want to say O notation, big O notation, we mean less than or equal. That, oh, this is the upper bound on the running time of this algorithm. Uh, running time, sometimes also we talk about a space, but generally we talk about, uh, so the space also becomes important in the big era things because you, you want to make sure that the space of these machines are also not that large, but so O notation can be used for time, for a space, for the number of rounds, for example, in the map reduce or any other operation, but these are the generally things, uh, time, a space, and the number of rounds in this Spark Hadoop type of things, essentially, map reduce type of things for distributed computing. Okay, now sometimes you want to say that, uh, you want to say that, okay, that you try to say this is the upper bound. Sometimes you want to say that actually the running time of my algorithm cannot be better than this. It cannot be better than uh, order n. It cannot be better than n or n squared or something like this. This is the one that we are using the notation that uh, generally we use. So the motivation for omega is coming from the lower bound. You want to say that the running time of my algorithm is the omega n. But the meaning of that, it means that it is at least order n. So that in some sense, the omega is the reverse of that. That is for, you want to say it's greater than or equal. You want to say the running time of my algorithm is omega n. It means that it is at least uh, this n uh, function of n. So what is the exact formal definition is very similar to the O notations. Uh, So uh, we want to say that, uh, like, uh, if there are exist essentially, we, again, we say that uh, uh, something like, I think here I have used T of N is, again, we will write it like this, this equation, omega G of N. What's the meaning of that? It means that, again, there is some uh, constant capital N and some constant C such that uh, essentially uh, T of N, so that is uh, like here that T of N is greater than or equal to uh, C times G of N. or you can, uh, yeah, this is like essentially this thing. So this is exactly the reverse of this uh, direction, uh, omega. Uh, and uh, so this is the things that we, uh, so this is an example. So uh, this is again, the N and C such that when N becomes larger than capital N, 
then we have this property. So we have in O notation, we have less than or equal here, we have greater than or equal. So here is an example. For example, in a square, you can say that is a omega of n to the two minus 100. Also, you can say n is omega of n to the 0 0.9. So if you, this is, this is called linear. This is uh, called sublinear. So this is linear. So uh, what is sublinear? Essentially n to the one minus epsilon for some constant epsilon. So that is called sublinear. So uh, we talked about polylog. So generally polylog is also order of sublinear. So a uh, polylog is less than sublinear. So we have constant, we have polylog, we have sublinear, and then we have linear. So for example, a particular thing, if epsilon is half, then it becomes SQR root of N. So SQR root of N is a sublinear function. So, and of course, N is omega of sublinear. So linear is omega of sublinear. And in general, if we have this property, if we have, uh, if uh, this function f of n is order g of n, then we can say that g of n is equal to omega of. So actually to prove that some function is <laughs> Uh, omega of something, you can just prove the O for the reverse of it. To say that G of N is F or omega F of N, you only need to say that F of N is order G of N. That is actually this, you can define it as a function of definition of uh, omega as well. Uh, good. So this is, we have uh, less than, we have uh, greater than or equal. And uh, so what about the equal? The equal would be theta. So theta means equal. We say that two function f of n and g of n are theta of each other. If uh, f of n is uh, both uh, o of g of n and omega of g of n. So essentially, if you have less than uh, equal and we have greater than equal, then we have equality and the equality would be theta. Great. So, uh, yeah, this is the one that I have just mentioned it. Uh, good. So, uh, one other thing that we have it now. So uh, we talked about uh, like, so uh, we talked about less than and greater than instead of uh, less than equal or greater than equal. No, uh, uh, sorry, we talked about less than equal and greater than equal to and equal, which was the theta of n that I mentioned. Then the question is, uh, what about less than or great, less than and greater, not equality. So we don't have equality here. So this is, we are using uh, two things. So we, we are using little o, it is called little o. So this is called the little o of, I mean, I have mentioned, little o of g of n, non-capital version of that. If this is a definition, if a limit of f of n over g of n, when n goes to infinity goes to zero, that in that case, it means that f of n is a little o of g of n. Uh, this note that we don't have this one. For example, we talk about uh, n to the two versus five n to the two plus 16. If you consider this function, we know that this, is, uh, this function is o of n square. 
5n to the 2 plus uh, 16. This is order n square. Good? That we know that. However, if you take the limit, then the limit actually then goes to infinity, that would be equal to five, or I don't know, one over five or something. Like actually you can say five, yeah. You say it, the limit or it goes five or over one over five. So the limit goes to some constant factor. If this limit goes to some constant factor, then it still it is O notation, like capital O notation. But if the limit goes to zero, then in this case, uh, we have this, essentially little own notation. Uh, so uh, this is this is an important one. Uh, like you can see that, uh, uh, you can say that n over log n is actually little o of n. Why? Because if you write it down, so for example, uh, what would be this one? So f of n, uh, f of n over g of n. So it would be <laughs> n log n. <coughs> over n. So in this case, n will uh, cancel out, and then we have one over log n. But if n goes to infinity, then this is become zero. So that's the reason that we have this one. But as I mentioned, n over 10 is not little o of n because then it goes to the one over 10 and one over 10 is a constant, is not is a constant greater than this. So uh, this, is the, this is for uh, essentially less than for, we have also this omega. Omega is uh, essentially, or little uh, uh, omega. So we had the big omega for uh, greater than or equal, and we have the omega for less than that. So we will say that, uh, again, the same definition. We say that f of n is omega of g of n if g of n is little o of f of n, the same way that we have defined omega. Uh, so it is just the reverse of that. You can mention it in this thing, then it, the reverse would be g of n over f of n goes to zero. So some important examples here that are interesting, uh, this one. So uh, for example, n to the c, is little o of a to the n for all constant c. So before we had this theorem, n to the c is order, like order, this one, but also it is actually little o of a to the n. Uh, so all these things that we talk about, uh, polylogarithmic, uh, uh, constant polylogarithmic, sublinear, linear, quadratic, and uh, cubic, all of them actually are strict. All of them you can say in terms of O of the each others. So this is correct for any C greater than zero and A greater than zero. So uh, similar things that we have shown for the log, you just put M equal to log uh, M base A, then you get these things. So polynomials, uh, so this one says polynomials is little O of exponentials. Here say polylogarithm, polylogarithm uh, is, little of linear algorithms. Uh, good. So let me just... Uh, uh, Good. So uh, uh, one important thing, so we generally ignore constants in the running time of the algorithms, as, as, as we discussed here. So we generally uh, uh, ignore constants in the O notation, but sometimes in practice, actually this constant matters. Uh, uh, for example, I mean, at Google, if you want to do that, so uh, yeah, somebody maybe say, uh, the, when you search something, it may take, I don't know, less than a second, or I don't know, maybe 10 milliseconds or something like 20 milliseconds that you will get the results. There, if this constant becomes, I don't know, 100 times more, if you do something, it takes 
10 seconds to get the results or even more, I don't know, uh, 60 seconds to get a result, then it becomes essentially impractical. Uh, like, it's still so it's a constant, you will get it in 60 seconds, but it is just too much. So constant actually for big data becomes important. Or like, for example, about when we are showing advertisement, if uh, when your page appears and the advertisement is not there, generally it's in like 20 milliseconds you need to the advertisement should appear here. So you should make sure that everything works and in 20 seconds, it complicated things is going, some bidding, some auction is going, and then you can show some advertisement. Everything should be less than in 20 milliseconds. So constant can become in some problems. You can see chapter three of your book and uh, Wikipedia about big O notations for more examples of constants and more information about this. Uh, uh, I mentioned about uh, this, O tilde notation when we have polylog. I mentioned that uh, this one, we are uh, using this one for the running time, but uh, sometime, uh, and it, this it is for major steps. So we may use uh, for time, for a space, how much a space you have it, but generally it can be used for other things. For example, we are talking about some problem, the major step. So sometime when we compare two things, we, we try to say, what is the number of comparisons? And that number of comparisons we can say in the terms of O notations. Or we may ask a question. We may ask some, uh, we may call another oracle or another function. We can say how many times we will call this function. We can say what is the order of the number of things. So order can be used for lots of these things and for both time and essentially for the space. Uh, a space also it becomes important. For example, uh, we may talk actually at the end of the class uh, about uh, this uh, algorithms, big data algorithms. Uh, so for the big data algorithms, uh, uh, actually, this space becomes important. The space complexity, uh, and uh, generally, for example, in the we talk about it maybe later. This is some algorithms called streaming algorithms. Uh, uh, think about, I mean, the routers. So when you have some routers, there are lots of packages that are going through this router, and it routes it to different things. When you send an email, you will see a movie, everything. Uh, this they break down into a small packets, and these packets are go to goes through routers. And these routers, they are seeing lots of packages, but they don't have a space to save all of them. I mean, because they are like cheap devices, they don't have the things. So in that case, but still, you may want to get some statistics from this router. That's the thing that is called a streaming algorithms. And for a streaming algorithms. Uh, the question is that uh, what is the best, uh, like the space becomes important. You you want to have some algorithms that get some important uh, statistics about these uh, packets that are going through these routers. And the space that you have is very limited. This is called a streaming algorithm. There are lots of applications. A similar thing, for example, about the blockchain. You may want to do that, but you, do, you don't need to have the whole blockchain to have this kind of cryptocurrency transaction, et cetera. There are lots of other applications of this. Uh, uh, yeah, and so, I mean, for some of these algorithms, it would be good if you can say that a constant n a constant n in terms of a space is like order one space is, we can do that. Or we can do it in order one query times. We can do all of these things. Uh, uh, in this class, we mainly talk about the running time and the number of comparisons, etc. cetera. But uh, there are maybe some cases that we talk about the uh, uh, space, but a space, as I mentioned, for a streaming algorithm for big data actually is used a lot and can be used a lot. Uh, good. So uh, uh, finally here, I mean, there is something in the book that we are uh, mentioning this one. So there are like, you can see lots of these techniques, uh, some mathematical techniques for proving O notations, et cetera. Some of them are this formula that I'm just mentioning. For example, if you define S1 of I, which is the sum of the I, sum of I's, then y, 
like me from one to n, then it would be n times n plus two. We can prove all of them by induction. Or if it is uh, i equal to one to i to the two, then it would be this n to the cube, essentially it would be order uh, n cube, which is n times n plus one, this one. This one, so this is n cube. So uh, other two examples here are interesting. I can just maybe mention it very fast. These two examples as well. I don't write it down. So I just wanted to mention here and then we are done with this. Yeah, so th this one, if f of n is this one, uh, if f of n is this things, i equal to zero to the n, two to the i. So it is one plus two plus this one. So this is some proof technique that you can actually use it. So we will define f of n. Now come, consider two times f of n. So this is f of n, it is two times. So two times f of n would be two plus four plus this one and two n plus one. Now, what can we do? We can take the difference between f of n and two f of n versus f of n. Two times f of n minus f of n. If you see that everything will be canceled here, this will be canceled, canceled, canceled. The only remaining thing here would be two to the n plus one minus one. So two uh, times f of n minus f of n would be two to the n plus one minus one. So of course, two, min two times f of n minus f of n would be f of n. So f of n would be this. So this is some tricks that actually you can prove some formula. It, in, another interesting thing, it would be like this. This is the one that we can go. Uh, so let's define g of n is a bit more complicated. It is i times two to the i. So it is i times, so one times two to the one, two times two to the two and so on and so forth. How can we compute i? So let's write two times g, g of n. If you write two times g of n, then it would be one times two to the two, two times two to the three and so on and so forth. If you uh, now do the same trick, two times g of n minus g of n. If you do that, the formula would be something like this. Actually, all of them will be canceled we have one, here we had i times two to the i. If you do this uh, essentially subtractions, then from each two to the i, we have only one. So it becomes n times two to the n plus one minus this formula. Now, what is this formula? We had it, this is exactly f of n that we had it before. So we will just replace this one from f of n and then two times g of n minus g of n would be g of n. So essentially, if you do that, then the formula would be, so this would be, this formula uh, that we, we have it here, and this formula that we will get it from f, this f of n minus one. So if you put that, I mean, then the whole formula would be uh, this one that we have it. So g of n, which is this function, is actually equal to this. This is a trick, this subtraction is important. You can see more examples of this in page 53 and 54 of the Introduction to Algorithms book, A Creative Approach by Udi Members. And uh, you, that's uh, good things. And we are done. Any questions? <laughs>